Welcome to The One Podcast with Greg Riley, where I discuss the importance of spirituality, intuition, self-awareness, and emotional intelligence in today's busy lives. By expanding our intuition and spiritual connection, our lives evolve to places we can only ever dream of. G'day listeners. Um, tonight, I've got a return guest tonight. Paula, how are you doing? It's good to see you again. It's been, I think, nearly 12 months since we chatted last time. It has been so long, Greg. Um, I'm so excited to be here tonight. <laughs> I think we last we got we got Harvey on last time, didn't we? Uh, he dragged him into the, into the into the podcast. Um, we tell us about what's changed for you the last since the last twelve months. Because now you're really into the into the business coaching, the management of money, which I'm really excited about. Because not not a lot of people teach it. It's um, as I said, like you know, before we come on, a lot of people, you know, a lot of business coaches out there teach about money, but it's more about the you know. Um, tapping into the fourth dimension, the mystical place, and you can just yeah. operate and the money just magically appears in your life. And we all know that's not true, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. To, ex- to an extent, right? To an extent. But so tell us about your journey the last 12 months from, from being like a business coach to focusing, what is it now that you do that's really, really, you know, at the leading edge? Yeah. So I've, I'm really focusing now on money because uh, like kind of what you said, I saw so many people just being taught how to make money and yeah. um, how to make sales and how to market and it was just all the same stuff Yeah, and they don't know how to manage it. So what happens, and this is sort of like any accountant or bookkeeper out there will know this sort of bit of a running joke, but like as soon as a business makes a lot of money and it's very unexpected yeah. um, and they've learned how to, They'll they'll figure out a way to spend it. They'll say something like, "I don't I don't know how I'm going to spend all this. Like this is this is amazing. Like this." And then all of a sudden, the the next month, they figured out how to spend that. Like so, um, there's there's some patterns with money that we need to to work through, but also um, how to manage it. Like how to have your system yeah. set up. Like how to actually be financially set up. Like too many people are running a business and. Um, I've actually got like a, a free workshop I'm running at the moment and I, and my criteria to get in is that they've made six figures and yeah. I'm surprised. I am so surprised there's not more women who have made six figures in their business and I just want to change that. I want to see people actually feel like they can support their family and they can build a business and yeah. they can build their financial future like that. That's oh, what I'm passionate about. I, I, I love it. I, I, I let's say the wrong thing here. Um, I, I know I know a business coach, female business coach. Um, and when I spoke to her, I, I talked about what accounting software do you use? Do you use zero or something like that? She goes, What are you talking about? I said, Well, GST and Bass and all I said, What are you talking about? She does cash jobs, right? She has people pay cash to her. She doesn't wow. declare all you, right? <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, oh, coach, my right? gosh. That's and like... a business. So, this, yeah, so that's, that's a problem. That's yeah. a big problem. And they, there are so many, as you said, yeah, there are so many people out there who are saying that they're a business coach, but um, I encourage you to look at their experience. Like what, you know, what has got them to that? Is it just that they kind of build a business and they've decided that, the, the business niche is going to be the niche that they go into. Or copy um, someone else's work and put it as their someone own. Someone else's work, yeah. copying it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it for me, it 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 just comes easy, and I, I find it so funny. Yeah. Like you've got like all of these people sort of online saying and and hey Paula, like you know, like how long have you been coaching before? And I'm like, well, she was. I've been doing this sort of thing for about twenty years, right? Um, and. So yeah. the money side of it is just so easy for me, like it is with any accountant who's been doing this stuff for this long. Um, you you got to have this stuff right because otherwise you're going to come up with some some rude awakenings when it gets to tax time, or yep. you're just going to continually be in this loop of not really knowing how to manage and grow your money and your personal side too. I work on both, like. You know, yep. how to set your business up, but also how to set your money up so you don't have to sit there and look at a budget all the time because that's boring, but so that you can still stick to one. <laughs> well, many people don't have budgets, yes. So I'm really interested in the, the, the female side. You said something about there's so many female entrepreneurs aren't making six figures. 
Yeah. Yeah. Look, I sort of see that as the as the uh, the next frontier, especially you know, um, you know, going forward is helping females, you know, tap into that excellence in a way to be able to create a six figure business and manage it properly. What is it that's you know stopping women from maybe reaching six figures and then not blowing it all? Yeah. I, look, I, I think a, a really big part of it is not seeing themselves as someone who actually does this business, like still seeing it like it's a little side project. Yeah. And I, I don't think it's just business. I think uh, a, a lot of women see it, you know, that if they've got a job, as the job is sort of like the little, the little thing and yep. my partner's got the real thing or this business is the little thing and um someone will come and look after me for the rest of it even if they're like it it's sort of ingrained in the way that we have been raised and yeah i got yeah i think it takes a lot to get past that and say actually no it's okay for me to pay bigger it's okay for me to step up and do this and it's okay for me to maybe like go of some of the more traditional roles and step into that because it will take some time and it will mean that you have to lean on some other people. And it will mean that you have to not do everything because you just can't. Oh, wow. That, that you said something there very, very, very important. And some things I have arguments with people about, about can I do it all? Like you said, we're really important about seeking help, seeking yeah. someone like yourself is not something, is not a sense of failure. Those people who do succeed and ex- ex- succeed exponentially they naturally have people in their corner like yourself yes i have people in my corner like i, yeah. I there's no way i could do it on my own there's no way yeah. like that's the thing like right from um even before i started this business that um even when i was in my corporate job what i observed i remember sitting back and observing the leadership and going They've all got mentors. They've all got coaches. I need a coach. Yeah. Like, I wasn't sitting around waiting for someone to pay for it for me. I was like, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to get myself a coach and I'm going to do something different. So if I've got if I've got a uh, a female out there who's an entrepreneur or running a, I mean, even a, a, maybe a C-suite executive, yes. just, there's people kind of stuff, right? It's if I've got a female who's very high performing at that level who wants to get more out, because I, I think I see you more as more than the business coach. There's, you mentioned something there about leadership, and I think that from what I see from the outside in, and this is, correct me if I'm completely wrong here, but this is just me seeing from the outside in, you do focus on money, but it's actually not even about money. It's more of a, it is a personal transformation. It is a leadership transformation. It's a transformation into, you know, into yourself and the blocks that you've got around that money, even though you do focus on money, there's so much more around there. And from what yeah. I see is that you have these very, very, you know, women who need someone like the, like you in their corner to believe in them. Yes. Yes. You've, you've really hit it there. It, it is. It's a, it's a, it is a personal transformation coupled with the right systems and processes, like, I'll give them a money system, of course. Yeah. Right? But you have, to, I mean, you have to have those systems and process. You have to know how to manage it well. You have to know how to grow your wealth. But you have to be able to, to step into that person to be able to do it. There's no way that you can remain the same way and, and transform. You, you have to go through some form of change. I've got a mate who's in property development and he does, does some presentations and one of his slides says that ninety-seven um, percent of people, when they retire, are going to retire in poverty. I know this is the this is the scariest yeah. thing that we people are not really prepared. They're not prepared because really our brains are set up for now to look at instant gratification, to look at this is what I want now. So you know the money comes in, and already we're thinking. I'm going to spend it here and here and here. And instead of thinking. I do like my Chanel handbags, though. I do like my Chanel. So don't tell you that. <laughs> I do like my Chanel. I do like Chanel. 
Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you've got to be in a position where you can walk in there and purchase it with the amount of money and still know that you've got some investments. Yep. Otherwise, it's a really silly purchase for you. It's just a purchase for your significance and for your, you know, whatever you, you know, you, you're needing. And if we can solve that as well, and you can feel good, and it takes discipline, and it takes patience, and you have to be okay to change a few things and have some delayed gratification so that you can have the life that you want. Because you can actually, you, you can retire on a lot a lot more money if you just plan well for it and if you start early I mean time is on your side so, I, I was studying with my son the other day he's um 17 he turned 17 he said I've been saving all my money mom um I want to now put it into some investments I'm like okay well let's sit down and, and map this out I thought he might just have a, a little bit no this kid's been like hustling his grandparents for lawn mowing jobs here, there, and everywhere. This, he, he'd saved up a whole heap. He was ready to actually start that investment account, yeah. <laughs> right? So, but he, money. I said to him, like, if you just, even if you just put this much aside every single, you know, week or the every single month, regardless, and you know, it was such a small amount, you're going to be able to increase that. You'll be fine because yeah. you've got time. Like. It's just that so many of us leave it to later and we don't have the time to play with. And so we think, why even start? But you should start. You should absolutely bit, start from like, wherever you are. It's a bit like start, starting a health regime when you got cancer. Yeah. It's a bit too late at that stage, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is, look, um, you're in a very interesting niche because it's, and again, this is my impression from outside in. It's not, it's a hard sell because, you know, most people, they, they want, like you said before, the big sales, the business coaches, 50 grand months, hundred grand months. And you're talking about, you know, structure and savings and managing your money and all that kind of stuff. Right. But that's not, that's not the lights and fancy and all that kind of stuff that the business coaches sell. Right. Yeah. It's and, not the lights and fancy what they sell. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But it, but. it's. It's the foundation of a very, very successful business. And if you do not have this, your business will fail. Exactly. And the people that I work with, this is, this is the exciting part. When they do this transformation, they go through this. I mean, I've got people who have uh, bricks and mortar businesses. I've got people who have got businesses online. Most of the people I work with have been in business for a while. So yep. we're talking years. And they have not been able to get it really flowing or it's just sort of stopped a little bit or it just hasn't ever, I mean, it's taken off, but it hasn't. Like, so we're talking people who have been in business maybe 19 years. Yeah. I've got people in there for 20 years, some people for six years. Um, and some magical things happen after this. Like uh, I've got uh, a lady just about to launch a completely new brand, one who's now putting um, a pitch to a, a TV um company on on hers and um i'm just thinking of another lady who, who very successful pr um company and she said paula after your program i'm now fully booked i now need to like work out the next step like what's the next in my organization yeah. because i've got to hire more people because they've got things set up in a way that they know they can afford right they can know they can afford to advertise they can afford to hire some more people they can afford to take that step they can afford to you know acquire a new business because they've set themselves up they've got that foundation so it's not just i guess the foundations but it's just that that leadership and that uh, mindset of getting rid of those money blocks yeah. that opens them up to this this higher income level that they never even saw coming so uh just pretend I'm a woman. Yes. <laughs> and these days I can be a female. Um, I'm going to get a couple of cops some shit for that. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'll edit that part out. I'll leave it in. I come to you. I've got, let's say I've got a business turns over, let's say 300, 400 grand a year. What's yep. the, what, what are you going to do for me? So I've, I've got a, a business that's quite, let's just quite okay. It's profitable. Probably let's say it turns over 50, 60 grand profit of a year. Something like that. Um, you know, what would you do for someone in that kind of example? What's the first thing? How, how does your program help people? 
Yeah. So the very first thing is we want to look at like what what do you actually want to achieve? Like what what is that ultimate financial goal for you and your family? Because that's going to be different for every single person. Like, you know, you've got people who, you know, the, the coaches who love to live in Bali, like on nothing. Great. Yep. Fantastic. That's what you want to do. But for me, you know, I'm here supporting five kids going through private schools. Like we've got some stuff to pay got the biggest so, business, yeah. and we've got a, a you know somewhere where we're going right so you, i've got three you get... to a lot. It's, if you have five jesus crazy right crazy and we've got some private like, soccer things happening here too <laughs> <laughs> um so you, you want to look at you know what what do you need to produce for what you want to because most of the time we haven't even looked at it we, we've been too scared to look at what we ultimately want to live on. And so therefore, like you said before, you end up retiring in poverty because we haven't actually thought about what do we want to live on. And when we start to think about that, then we can create some long, um, long-term long goals, some mid-term goals, some shorter-term goals. So when we come down to those shorter-term goals, we're looking at what, what vehicles have we got, like, Maybe you've got a business, maybe you've got some investments, maybe, you know, you just need to set your money up better. But if you're looking at your business as your main, um, you know, vehicle, like how do you then want to run it, run it? Like how do you want to see this? Is it good and working the way it is? Or do we need to actually look at this differently? And what I find is a lot of the people who go through that first bit with me yep. end up looking at their business in a very different way and going, okay, well, actually, if I could, I would like to do it like this. And so they end up almost stepping back to step forward, so setting up their, their business in a different way or setting up the systems or getting the processes in place ready to create this big next thing or acquire something similar to the side or um, launch into working with investors. Like if they have to release what's inside of them first, those barriers of this is the only way that I can do business and now look at, okay, well, actually, if I'm going to achieve this big financial goal, I'm going to have to do it differently. Yeah. And why so don't what, I give it a go? What are some of the psychological blocks in people you have to sort of work around when, you know, you talk the practical side of things and, and this is a funny thing, it's like, it's like a diet, right? We all know the right way to actually eat food, but we don't, right? We don't. Yeah, it's it, you know what? It is exactly the same as weight loss. I yep. think like when I think about your relationship with money um, or your relationship with people or your relationship with food, it is so similar. Your relationship with it really matters. And like if I think of one of my clients, oh, my gosh, um, beautiful Kerry, she came to me and she was just like, oh, hello, I need the strategy. And she came to the first lesson. The first bit is all about the mindset, right? So she's like, she called me straight after can I just come to the strategy? I'm like, please sit through this, Kerry. This is going to be so big. And she's like, Paula, I'm so glad. She's like my biggest fan now. Yep. She said, I'm so glad that I sat through it because the block that she had was um, that came up was I need to be saved. And she didn't realize that that was her block. Yeah. But Kerry actually, before she came on board with me, she had a stroke. And within a week, her mother had a stroke as well. So both of them, both of them, and they both had this, I need to be saved. Now, Kerry was the main breadwinner for her family. She had a son, a small son. She had to recover, still try and run the business so it didn't go under, um, re recover from her stroke and look after her child and be a mother and all the things and get back out there when she didn't feel like it. She didn't want to at that point, you know, like she didn't, she felt like she looked different. She talked different. She didn't feel her, the energy was the same. And um, when she released this blog, she, she said she went deep. I'd tell them to go deep, right? She went deep. She went deep with her mom. She went deep with her dad. Um, She went deep with her husband. And when she released this, I kid you not, it was like a week later and she's like calling me. She goes, Paula, it's like everything has shifted. All of the invoices that she had sitting there, not even ready yet, yeah. not e were paid. People were paying them. She's like, people were coming out of nowhere. Things that I hadn't got paid for ages, that I was chasing, all of a sudden got paid. 
and I've got two new people who are inquiring, want to chat with me about some, some services. I'm like, <laughs> the block shifts and something lines up, right? So that's where, this that's is where, where you're different. You, it's where you're different, right? Because yeah. I'll do the mindset stuff, right? There's so many coaches out there who just do money blocks, right? And look, I get it. I, I, yeah. I do that with my clients as well too, right? About where your blocks subconsciously about that. And that's a massive part of it. But that's where a lot of business coaches stop. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, it's no, like, yeah. just your mindset. It's like, no, that's like, that. that's just that part. You got all this other stuff to do, right? Yeah. And that's where you've got, you've got the talent to go, I've got the whole pack. Yeah. You, you, you can't just stop there because you won't know what or how to then like grasp yeah. that particular. And, Gosh, the, other part is, so many... is that the other part is when they get a lot of money, like you said before, the other money block is I get to spend it. Yep. It's, I get a sense of success and worth and self and I walk around with my Rolex and shit and, yes. you know, and my Chanel's <laughs> yes. and, and because I've got self-worth issues. Yes, because I need to. And if you, yeah. And if, if you really look at some of the most successful people, they don't care. Every they really day. don't care. They're probably wearing the same thing. Yeah. Because they're like, they, they don't have those self-worth issues. They don't have those significant issues anymore. They're actually just there to do their thing and do all the things that they love, but they don't care that they have to have all of the stuff on show. Yep. Not that I'm saying that it's, you know, like if you want to do that, fantastic. That's in your, like, that's what you really value. Go for it. I for it to with needs. Yeah, yeah, but um, yes, having it set up, or they don't feel safe to have that money, like, or they don't feel like they they can um, manage it well, or they're not good with it. And they've been told they haven't been good with it, um, or uh, for, especially for a lot of women, um, have been raised, and I even found it in one of my daughters who, like, just you're not good with math. No, 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 that. That's for the that's for your your partner. That's for hubby to look after. You don't look after that bit. And I even did that like as an accountant for in my first marriage, I even sort of did that just because those traditional roles were being played out, even though I was the one with the money sense. Yeah. I let him look after the money because he wanted to and it was you know, it was like that he felt like that was his job to do and I felt like that was my job to pull back on in the home but it was such a silly thing because I had no oversight over things and I so strongly want women to have oversight over their their money. Is there a sense of if I don't look at it it's not there with all the people? Yes. Yeah. If I don't and I'll just focus on sales and being creative and all the things and I just did not realize, I just didn't click for so long that I was in all of these beautiful business programs and I just thought everyone was doing the same thing as me. I didn't click that, you know, so many of them hadn't even made enough to make tax, like to to make the criteria of tax. Yeah. Or if they were making it, all of it was gone. And I just started to see this pattern of brilliant people, brilliant coaches come in, build this amazing business, get to a million and then lose it all. Yeah, and then give up, yeah. or go away for a few months and try something new and do the same thing because they've got a money block that they need to deal with first, and also they probably need some systems. They need to know how to manage it. That's the missing part. Well, that that's that's the thing is that's what I was saying before is that you've got you got sort of the the holy grail of business coaching because of your background and and you know, being a CPA and where you've worked before in government and corporate side of things, right? Managing billion dollar projects. Yeah. You're not some out there who if I've seen who have been in business two years and they're I'm a fifty grand, you know, kind of hundred grand month kind of coach, right? Is yeah. that you've got this thing where you've got the runs of the board and you've got the credibility on board and you've got, you know, the history as well too of what you've got. So people can trust you to go, well, she she actually does it. She's actually a product of, of of everything she does, and that's what I like about what you've got is that 
you know, there's so much integrity and transparency in the space that you do is that for a, for a lot of, I suppose, female entrepreneurs, they feel like they got to do it themselves. They feel like I do this little lone wolf to try and prove to people that I can do it. And, and like we said before about reaching out for help, it's not, it's not a sense of failure. Like you said, we all have, co I've got a coach, right? And, but I think for females, it's this sort of thing that I need to prove to people that I can do it myself. I'm not just a housewife, or I'm just not this yes. thing. Is it, do you come across that? Yes, absolutely. And that that's when you sort of, you just, you're wearing yourself out because you're trying to be everything to everyone. And you, you just, you cannot like you, I always, I always think you, you can have everything, just not all at once. You can't yeah. have it all at once. Like. Do you, do, you find, yeah. do you find you just have people sort of come to you and just kind of go, hey, I'm just not coping, Paula. I can't talk about this to anybody, but I just need to talk about, I'm just not coping. The business is on the brink. I've, I've just got my head above water somehow. And, but just to have that trust in someone to yeah. sit there and be completely vulnerable with and say, I'm barely hanging on by a thread here. Yeah. Yeah. Especially to the females, let... right? Yeah. Because there's only like, guys don't talk emotionally, but we'll talk about sport and business. Yeah. Women talk emotionally, but hold their business stuff to themselves. Is that sort of what happens? I, I love this because, yes, like, I I was talking to one of my um, male friends. I don't know if you know him, Quang. I don't know if I was speaking to him. Anyway, he was, um, and I was saying, amongst your guy friends, do you just talk about, like, business and money and stuff? He's like, yeah, we talk about all that stuff. Girls don't talk about that. We talk about skin care. We'll, we'll talk about hair care. We'll talk about our diet. And, and you'll get so detailed about that stuff. And everyone will be swapping numbers and swapping hair care products and all of that stuff. But we don't talk about money. And, and all of these products that we are swapping and we are talking about are lots of money, right? Yeah. And they're spending sometimes more than they can afford on silly things rather than thinking about their future and also the financial future of their children and children's children and all the things. It's funny. I was, Vanessa and I have this running joke here about my Instagram feed versus her Instagram feed. And, and mine's only coaching and mindset guys with their shirts off, off a male shit, right? And hers is food, babies, family stuff, yeah. um, more foods, um, designer clothes. Uh, <laughs> you're spot on. It, yeah. it, that, that's what happens here, right? Is yes. that, you know, and it's, it's, it sounds probably, people are going to probably go with us for saying this, but if I did a, a, a sort of a survey of the people at school with a school pickup, looked at their Instagram feeds, you know, yeah, it might be the same. I think so. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's like, that's a huge problem because all, one, all of this costs money and also yep. the conversations are not being had with women. And so therefore they're not actually participating in these wealth conversations like men would yeah. Um, just sort of get naturally swept up into talking about money because it's totally cool to say that. Um, we've like, got. We're going to ask some probably controversial we we'll keep going in a second I've yeah. a couple of controversial we've got some like I don't know some music. some oh, hang ups yeah. on not like not wanting to share that not wanting to talk about it and also not wanting to like make someone else feel uncomfortable and all the things so we talk about things that are like the skin the hair the yeah. beauty the food the diet like try this diet and all of a sudden you're trying a different diet or a different recipe or whatever it is totally comfortable going into yeah. all that detail but i just want to be i just want more women to feel totally comfortable actually going you know what this is all the money system that i have and this is what i do and um oh i'd love to share this with you oh you do that fantastic yeah. <laughs> that's what i want to say how how much does it impact on your personal life when you get your business in line in alignment uh, and what happens if you don't yeah. Um, what, what, what's the flow on effect top down from from having a really good flowing business? Yeah. Versus a, a shit show. 
yeah, well, when it's like a shit show, yeah. Uh, yeah, you've probably seen it before. Probably you've got some clients who are going through it or, you know, maybe been through it before. Um, it's hard. It's hard on your, your relationships. It's hard on um, because, and especially, you know, if you've got a family, you're trying to support them, you start to feel like a failure and you start to spiral in this spiral down. And yep. when you start to spiral down, what do you do? You sort of go back to those old habits of maybe working harder and you just start to try and throw everything right. at it. And when you're trying to throw everything at it, often it doesn't actually work because you got so desperate. And yep. then a lot of the time, um, you know, when they're in that spiral down or they, their business isn't working really well, the ego's there so much that they don't ask for help. Or they, yep. they think they can't afford it at that point, so they don't do it when that is the main point when they do need to actually say, yes, I do need help and do whatever it takes to get there. Um, listen to a podcast the other day. It might have been like Lewis Howes or um, Ed Milet, like amazing podcasters. All of them say that their business had the ups and it had the downs. And when it went on the down, they grabbed some other jobs to prop it up. They gra- they kept on going though they asked yep. for help they got the help but they found a way to get the help they didn't say i'm going to give up or my ego's got in the way i'm not going to ask for help they found a way i find it funny like um um around people to understand the impact of stress especially by mechanically in the in the world because um and i was speaking to someone the other day about this and, and she was really really stressed and i said you know you're trying to diet, but you're trying to count calories and go to the gym, but you're never going to get there because the one thing causing your issues with shopping down the tub of ice cream at night is the fact of your stress. Because when you're stressed, your brain craves calories. And no matter how much you try and do keto, no matter how much you try and do juices, no matter how much you go to the gym, it ain't doing shit, right? Yeah. And... And that's the thing is that, you know, understanding that part of even biomechanics of the stress, you know, pe- pe- just learning that stuff, you could go, oh, okay, well, if I fix my stress, I'll stop eating the ice cream. Probably not, but you eat a lot less of it, right? So, yes. And like yes. you said, the impact on relationships, the impact on your own self worth, like if you don't have your business set up properly, the stress it can come into and affect other aspects of your life because. When you're stressed, you, you, you're basically in your survival brain. And you know, that's from, from your NLP stuff. Yeah. You know, you, your prefrontal cortex goes offline. Your emotional control goes offline. Your ability to be able to be creative, visionary, all that kind of stuff goes, comes as a Uber and then it goes bye-bye, right? Yes. And then you're trying to function like that. You're trying to function at this high level, but you can't you because you're so stressed out because your business is shit. Yeah, you And like can't. you said, you, you spiral. When you spiral down. You spiral you, down. You go yeah. get in and you go, can I ask for help? Because I look at failure. It's like... Uh, and one of the biggest things is, and this is why I like, you know, interviewing people like you, you know what happens, and this is for the listeners, right? So, you know, when someone is at that bottom level and they're at that point of like, I'm about to lose it all, this is where you need people like Paula. She doesn't give a shit. Like everyone's yeah. been, everyone's been yeah. at the bottom. Right? And the worst, best thing we can do is offer a hand and say, it's okay. Yes. We yes. can help you, Right. It's not a failure because there's this, there's this shame involved with, with coming to this point when yes. it's at the brink of collapse and they go and see someone like you and it's like, yeah, it's okay, but so we're going to help you there. All of and it can be yeah. fixed. Yeah, yeah, all of it can be fixable. Like that's the thing. Like most of the things can be fixed, but if you're just sitting there and you're, you're sitting there in that stress zone, as you said, you actually can't function properly because all yeah. you can think of is the stress. Um, and you're not making the decisions properly because especially if you don't know your money, like you're not making proper decisions anyway. It's all on gut feel or, oh, maybe good sale. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll, or someone else is doing this. So I've got, I've got to do that too. Not, you've got to know your stuff. And so that way you won't get it you see yourself into those situations where it is stressful because you'll have more of an idea of what you can handle and what you can't handle at this point asking for help like having someone like having like um uh, you know i'm not mind money coaching but even a mindset coach i have a mindset coach i have a business coach i have 
I have both of them because, you know, my business coach is like, we're not about mindset. That's fine. Yeah. Great. It's yeah. all about business. And I'll have someone else for that. But you got to have those things in check because otherwise you won't, you won't evolve. You won't grow. You'll get to the, you'll get stuck and you'll get mm. stressed and you won't know how to unravel it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I speak to a, a, a coach, a, uh, actually a coach, a bookkeeper. Um, and we, we talked about, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, she sees with people in businesses. And I, I keep saying to her that people in business are good at what they do. Like they might be mechanic. They may be good at, um, golf coach. I don't know. They're good at something, but that's 10% of the business. 90% of the shit you don't do. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is where getting people like you in to sort of help out in that space to kind of, okay, right. We can take up some of the slack and get you to focus on what you're good at. Yeah get you into the place where if you're that visionary, if you're that person that, that point at the front and you're trying to be the business and be, be the, not in the business, but be in front of the business, which is the part you love, mm. getting you back into that is, is very vital because if you're stuck in the day to day operational side of things and you're drowning, you can't be out there. No, you, you can't, you can't even focus on it. No. So that's why getting someone like you to step back and kind of go, it's more than just money. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's create well, it's creating their lifestyle, like what that lifestyle that they want to have in the future. It's not just about like, it, that's, yeah, what I said at the start, it's just, just, just too many just saying, I want to make that, I want to help you make sales. Yeah. That's it, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I think that was great at the start. You know, that was great at the start for me when I started to build the business. I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to learn how to make sales. But yep. then there's more to it. There's a lot more to it to build a business. Um, and I just I just sort of, you know, having my background, just assumed everyone sort of just knew what I knew. But they, they don't. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. No, they don't. Um, and that that's that's why I suppose my people to sort of understand here is that, you know, especially the females, like reach out for help. Like there's mm. people who are experts in, in helping you get to for, from, you know, base six figures to multiple six figures and then to your first million dollars. Um, there are skills to end, but if you, if you have that shame and that guilt that you don't want to reach out for help, you'll never get there. But someone like yourself, it's a very powerful thing to sit in, some, some, sit in front of someone like you who's very caring and understands them and has empathy with them and go, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to make a list of shit, the mistakes I made? I oh, my continue. gosh. We yeah. all make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Look, I, I, you know, even this week, I had a huge thing go wrong in the business. Um, you just have to move. You have to move past it. Like, yeah. you, stuff is going to go wrong. You're going to have ebbs and flows. This is business. Yep. And, you know, you've got to be able to understand it and ride it mindset wise and also business wise yeah. um to stay in the game that's Correct. it one of the one of the things you said was um resilience now if, if you of all the the people i've ever seen and my mentor john you know john street is a phenomenal mentor um he he says one of the best assets for a successful business person is resilience mm -hmm. Totally agree. Because without, I totally the, agree. Then, like, there's ebbs and flows, ups and downs. Yeah, it's either right the way over the top, but when you're in the depths of it, and you've got to you know, find something. Yes. Yeah, and you can't be you know you can't be sort of reacting so emotionally and and losing it all the time. Or what happens when you uh, react emotionally? What happens when you do react emotionally? That's when you spiral down. Yeah. <laughs> so you you need to be that. You need to hold that um, that leader. I, I I do believe I've I, you know that's that's what I go in with. I, I've, yeah. Every time I've lo I've let go of that leadership and let myself go into this emotional mess, that's when more emotional mess has been attracted to me. Yeah. When I've got um, you know, when you're holding that energy of okay, all right, like that happened. Rather than saying that happened, it's awful. It's the end of the world. Oh my gosh, this is this is the worst thing. Um, and 
like I had a really bad thing happen. Like I think that, you know, some people would have just been completely taken off. But a whole channel, like I'm, I'm launching in, in one week something and a whole channel of my, my leads coming in has been closed to me, right? And it was just like, but I have to say that's not, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just nothing. It's just, that's what happened. Next yeah. step forward. What's the plan? And, you know, lucky I've got like this beautiful team who's just like, okay, we've got some ideas and I'm like, this is the plan. Let's go with it. Like, yeah. that's yeah. it. We can't, like, I'm human. I'm going to be upset about it, but I don't have to lose my shit about it. I just can move forward and you're holding that space because business is like this stuff like that's yeah. going to happen all the time you're going to try things and they're not going to work not and then work. you're going to try them again and they are going to work you know <laughs> you know there's going to be some trial and error in in thing and there's going to be things that win and some things that just crash and it's yeah. the people who can be resilient who can get back up and go oh well okay that didn't work i'll just move on or i'll learn from it and that's it Yep. Rather than the people going, oh, that didn't work. So that means that I'm not good or I'm not worthy or I'm not smart. It's none of that. It's absolutely none of that. It really just is. You're playing a a game that is a little risky. You're not playing yep. in the safe space anymore. No. I, I'm going to say something to you that I don't know if you've been told before or someone's brought up before, but I, I would say that one of your probably – gifts that you have over a lot of other people who promote that they do have but they don't i actually think you're highly intuitive thank you and i think what probably what you teach people subconsciously or not without even knowing is how to tap into that intuition as well so you got systems and processes but i also yeah. think something down there you're actually teaching about their intuition as well yes yes um yes i would say that I would definitely say that there's some, there is some, um, because I've studied, I've studied a lot of Joe Dispenza's work. I don't know if you're familiar with Joe Dispenza. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I've studied a lot of Joe Dispenza's work. I actually worked with one of his, um, uh, one of his coaches. Um, and so that comes through, that yeah. stuff comes through, right? That um, for a business person, especially in the leadership role as well too, that's like a superpower. And I keep yeah. saying to people, um, and even my business has shifted now. I'm doing a lot more intuition coaching because with that onslaught of AI, what's something you can learn as a human being that AI can teach you or doesn't have? Yes. That's that ability to, to be able to spot things, be able to, you know, see things. And be, and that's a very special place to, like you said, a lot of your work's going inward. And that's yes. a place that's inward. It is. It is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because even, even that would be just a price of admission for, for somebody, especially a female, in a, in to, to re tap into that intuition space because um, it's very, very profound. All right. Controversial things. All right. There's a lot of people who promote masculine and feminine stuff, right? Do you have a lot of um, women who struggle with being in business and being too much in the masculine? I think majority, <laughs> majority, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. How does that impact me, on, on females if you're constantly being in that sort of yeah, so two, energy? No, yeah. Two things that is, is not great. Um, one, when we're in that masculine energy too much, it's exhausting. It's absolutely exhausting. Um, yeah, yeah. And it, for, for a man, I, I I don't believe it is. I believe that, you know, like it, it gives you power. Like it gives yes. you, like I, I watch my boys and they they want to be in that energy and they want to do things and they want to, whereas when I'm in that energy, I need a break from it. And I think yeah. that we don't often work in ways that work for us because we haven't been um, conditioned that way. We've gone through a school system. We've probably been put into a job. We've been conditioned to sort of work in a more of a masculine way when we need to work in, in, in a way that works for us. And sometimes that does require some rest. Sometimes that does require us to do something that will get us back into our feminine, like getting out into nature, 
um, dancing around, doing a bit of meditation, just taking a break, having a cup of tea, just breathing, like all those beautiful things that we just need that space to do. And then come back and you feel like a hundred times better because you've had that break. But we're conditioned to just work, work, work. The other problem with it is that it can really repel the money. It can really repel the money in the business. So there's this masculine feminine and I didn't know if you've heard about this or yeah. I've definitely um I've definitely spoken about it before but when you're more in your feminine especially as a as a woman you're going to attract in to you what you want and if you're if you're wanting to attract more money then you need to be in your feminine you need to sit into that leadership you need to sit in that space of holding the the knowing and the faith that that money is coming that it's there that you're well supported rather than just going I have to work really hard to get this and I have to go a hundred percent and I have to just work harder and harder if you look out there now and you'll see so many people some people are working hard some people are not working hard and the people who are uh, working really really hard maybe some of the toughest jobs they're not the ones with the money right they're not usually not usually the ones with the money. The ones with the money have worked out the game of money and also they don't have to be the smartest people in the world or anything like that. Just worked out the game. Yeah. They're playing the game and they don't they know that they don't have to work as hard for it. They know that they have to do something for it to exchange for it. Yeah. But they can hold that. So um holding in that in that feminine for a woman, like tapping into that feminine energy of like you know, I attract what I want. I am a goddess. I am amazing. Like all of the things like, you know, you're amazing. You're amazing. Everyone is amazing. We need to believe that more often yeah. and tap into that more often. And that's when the money will start to come. People just get energized. They they feel your energy. They want to be around you. They want to get a piece of it. They're like, I just, I just want to be around you. And so yeah. therefore, you know, what you're selling sells a whole heap easier. I, I don't know where I saw this, and and I'm and I am no expert in this. I might have been on Diary CEO with Steve Bartlett, one of his, um, one of his interviewees. But it was about women following their cycle and knowing that they have to honor their cycle on a monthly basis, especially if they're business owners. And too many women don't. They 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 try and power through that shit. Yes. Um. Look, I. I have to say, I, I haven't de- I haven't gone into this really, really deep. Um, and I think, you know, different women are going to have like, different kinds of cycles as well. And then you've got a whole heap of women who are in business who are past that cycle stage as well, right? Yep. So you've got like all of these different, <laughs> different <laughs> things happening um, in in their space. But absolutely. Um, because even like you said before, like you got, you got women like menopause can last 10, 15 years, right? Yeah. And you've got that side of things. And, and you know, what, what I was saying is to really understand that only yourself in that space and not trying to yeah. ignore that, that very vital and, and very strong and, and amazing part of you, right? So, um, I can't remember what I saw, I'm pretty sure it was Steve Bartlett stuff, for it, but, um, it was pretty cool. Yeah. I, look, I think we're, we're not all the same. We're yeah. different for a reason, you know, like we're different for a reason. And, um, you know, I, I guess, you know, this is very controversial, you know, right now, but, you know, because there's, you know, there's a lot of people saying that, you know, there's no gender and all of this. Uh, but I, I do believe that we are very different and that we, yeah, and, um, you know, have different needs. We do. Yeah. And we, and, and if we can tap into what our needs are in our business and in our work or wherever you are, like, gosh, yeah, it's going to make things easier, right? Like there's, there's no point in pushing through something when it's just not going to come for you because that's not, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Look, it's, look, I'm just, I think there needs to be more people like you who have had the background like you. Because I, like we've discussed, there's a lot of business coaches out there who have got the, the depth of the puddle, right? That's how much depth they've got. And they've just ripped off other people's work, taken it as their own, and rebadging it and reselling it, right? There's a lot of that I've stuff out. I've had it happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then you've got one <laughs> yeah. coach on top of that who everyone knows I just, you know, 
are full of shit, right? So because, yeah. and, and, and I should say, I do believe in visualization. I do believe in, in manifestation. I, like, I do, right? So if you see my stuff, I absolutely but, do. This is where the good stuff yeah. comes, guys, is because Paula does it all. She's, she grabs in the metaphysical, she grabs in the spiritual, she grabs in the practical, she grabs the history, puts up a nice little package and says, here you go. If you want to have a successful business, I am your expert. Yeah. What have you got going on right now? Tell us what's, you got to see a, a new thing launching. What's, what's happening around the Paula Day arena right now? Well. Um, it's all happening. I'm so renovating a house, which I'm watching. And we're renovating a house. I was going to say, like, it's all happening because, you know, last week I just was painting something. <laughs> painting in the house. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. I, I painted someone's house. I don't know if it was mine or not. It was, it was mine. House. No. I only get to do little bits. Like, Johnny doesn't like, he, you know, he likes to do a lot of it. And he's just like, you can just paint this little bit. <laughs> like, okay. Don't want to, don't, don't want to, like, mess anything up. Anyway, so we're renovating a house. Yes, that's going to be um, on the market soon and sold, which is amazing. We'll be um, flooding on the next one. And next week, I'm actually running a workshop, which I haven't done in, no, about four months now. I haven't run any workshops, which, you know, everyone who's come to some of my workshops, I was running workshops for about five years, like almost every month. Um, and then I had a bit of a break from it and I'm, launching this one this is the first um one that i've run of this and it is the money blueprint workshop so the wealthy woman money blueprint workshop and i cannot wait to do this next week it's going to be 60 minutes with me i've got workbooks for you i've got a couple of things so if you want to like uh get in get in touch with like what what your relationship is with your money understand it and also understand you know, what you're missing to set yourself up financially, then that's a really good space to come along to um, to do that. You do have to have made six figures to come along yeah. to this. Otherwise, it's, you know, I, I strongly suggest you start somewhere um, else, like where you're just growing and learning how to sell. But come along if you, you know, if you are at that point, you feel like you're bumping into like an income um, level, like a ceiling, like you just can't get through it or yep. your money's all over the place or you don't want to look at it or you, you're not set up financially or if it all comes in, it all goes out, that kind of thing, then then come along to this um, it's a free workshop next week. And you can find all the details on my um, Instagram or my Facebook or my website to, to sign up. Well, I'm going to put all that stuff underneath. Um, by the time this comes out, you would have had the workshop because this will be this is the 20th of June. This will be out mid-July. <laughs> um, so put another one on. <laughs> All right, let's do it. If you want to get in touch with Paula, we'll put some details below and you can just reach out to Paula via her Instagram or Facebook or her website. Instagram, yeah, or, or website. And, yeah, you can always, um, yeah, get in contact with me. Yeah. And people know, like, I, I, I only interview people that I find that my clients will have some, one that I trust, first of all, and secondly, that my clients get a lot out of. And I think, if you're a female entrepreneur, female business owner, even a female C-suite executive, you know, even reaching out to Paula and and having that connection with her is 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 something that you probably will um, never ever regret in that space, especially you know you know with what she's worked with him before and and not only the mindset, the spiritual side of things, you know, the practical side of things. It's very rare you find somebody who has a complete package like this. So so guys, if you are even on the fence, just it's a phone call or an email. And I, I know she's sought after, so she might just have her books full right now. I don't know. Um, but it is worth a call because especially I like I like the girl power stuff. I like collectively, you know, you, yeah, there's a lot of to this. Like oh, having the group stuff is really powerful. Yeah. Thank you. So, guys, that's that's it for tonight. Again, reach out to Paula, and um, she's got some great products. She's got some great things for, for female entrepreneurs. Um, and if you can't get a hold of her, get a hold of me, and I'll put you in touch with her. Um, and, yeah, it's very, very vital to have. If you're running a business these days, having sales is one thing, but it won't, it won't make you a successful business if you don't have everything else in line. And 
you know, don't make the mistakes everybody else has. Um, she is, she is a gun as far as a financial coach goes or a business coach. So Paul, thank you for jumping on board tonight. Thank you. All right. We'll see you in the next episode, guys. Thank you for listening to the one podcast with Greg Riley. For all my content, check out my Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. For inquiries about one-on-one -on -one coaching, please send all requests to gregsgregreilly.com.au. Thank you once again for listening, and I look forward to sharing more content, creating deep insights to propel your life forward.